So I think to get started, um, if you wouldn't mind just kind of introducing yourself um, for the record, your name, your pronouns, your institution, job title, and anything else you might want folks to know about you. Sure. Um, my name is Marcia McIntosh. I'm a digital production librarian at the University of North Texas. Uh, my pronouns are she series. And I've been working there for almost seven, actually seven years, uh, this last uh, September. Um, what brought you to, um, to digital librarianship? What's your educational background and career? And um, yeah, kind of what led you in this direction and what do you like about it? Well, I uh, grew up in a small town and in Oklahoma and we had one library. And so that meant there was never any turnover. turnover. Uh, so I knew I wanted to work in the library when I went to college. And basically that was like one of my first priorities. Um, so and I actually did I worked circulation all four years, loved it, got to meet people and got to know the, the librarians there and learned a lot of different skills. Um, while I was there, I studied English literature, African African American studies uh, with a minor in business. Um, and I was always and have always been interested in literature, but I also kind of wanted to learn more about technology and computers and kind of put them together. And uh, fortunately, my school uh, had a digital humanities center where I uh, volunteered to work on a project and learned about uh, TEI encoding with XML and got to read some really cool like materials as well about like a uh, race in children's literature. And then um, after finishing that project, I ended up uh, being refer referred over to the digital libraries department uh, at uh, the Washington University uh, libraries. And so I was doing both circulation and digital libraries at the same time, uh, working on some Dred Scott uh, cases for uh, slaves who were suing for their freedom and in some cases actually got it he didn't but uh he helped set chart chart the way um one of the librarians was like hey what kind of librarian you want to be because i was like i want to be a librarian he's like i don't know and he's like you want to be a digital librarian it's like i want to be a digital librarian um so uh i came to uh ut with the uh, goal of becoming a digital librarian for specifically working with like digitization um and uh, cultural heritage materials um uh, so while I was there, I got to take the digital libraries class and really enjoyed it. I worked um, at that time, we were uh, given the opportunity to focus on different aspects of uh, digital libraries. Uh, there was the digitization group, a metadata group, and um, the, the group that up uploaded it into the system as well. Um, and a user interfaces group, I want to say as well. Um, I was in metadata because I wanted to get more experience there. And um, I really enjoyed that experience. And then while I was also at UT, I got to do digitization at my uh, graduate uh, research assistantship. Uh, I did uh, the Centers for Transportation Research and got to scan the publications that they produced and help put them in our catalog. And so I got to do some more cataloging slash metadata there and volunteered at a couple of different uh, organizations on campus, like the Harry Ransom Center had a Gone with the Wind exhibit going on that year. And I got to digitize some uh, fan letters and do the metadata for them. Um, so lots of lots of fun times there. Uh, then I, after graduating, I, I applied to this position and have been here ever since. So that's uh, kind of the full, full range, more or less. <laughs> In your current um, position, what type of digital work do you do? Do you work with digital collections and what kinds? Um, so in this position, I've done several tasks, including, uh, but not limiting to, to hiring and training uh, student workers who help do our scanning because we have a lot of scanning material. Um, I've also done my own scanning and processing and quality control. Um, I, I consult on the kind of strategic arrangement of the projects, like when they'll come in and kind of when they'll leave in a way. Um, so uh, lots of project management. I also inventory projects when they arrive in the lab to make sure that things that people see, that received to us has all been accounted for and that we're all on the same page about what we have. Um, and uh, preparing, I prepare projects for the actual digitization. So um, we have different systems that get, need to be set up in order to make it an, an easier process. So I help set up those systems. I have also uh, do reporting on what we do and what, what progress we made and uh, deadlines. And then um, the kind of final inventory of making sure things are set back and that they get digital copies. I also do a lot of administrative tools around like the student supervision, um, approving time, uh, schedule stuff, things like that. And then um, in addition to 
the kind of primary digital librarianship part of my job as a, as a faculty member at UNT, which is what we're classified as, or non-tenure faculty, we are allowed to do research and service. Uh, so I get to write publications and do presentations and like investigate things that either we're doing or a topic that I'm interested in. And then um, we also do service, which it could include cool things like conference planning for the Texas Conference on Digital Libraries, or um, uh, also hiring committees for the library or elsewhere, um, governance uh, or cultural committees, and digital scholarship committee, and uh, things of that nature. Since you mentioned some of those um, like professional developments um, and service kinds of things, is there anything that you have worked on um, as part of your job for, for those that you're really excited about? Uh, yeah, actually, t I, will, I will shout again about the Texas Conference on Digital Libraries. It's a great one. Um, and you get a lot, you get to meet a lot of people from a lot of different places. And conference planning is kind of fun. It's a lot of work, uh, but it's, it's, it's fun. And like, you get to see the results of your work and how it impacts people. And that's always nice. And I got to, I got to serve on it several years. So that was cool. Hiring committees are also, um, I, I enjoy them in the sense that um, at least, I, no, I do enjoy them. Uh, at least at uh, UNT this year, we tried to integrate some kind of uh, systems to uh, alleviate or remove bias for the actual interview process. Uh, and uh, I'm excited about how, 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 it's go how it's going. So that was uh, one thing I look forward to. Um, um, so one thing that was like kind of work intensive but useful was the uh, all names were removed from the applicants. Like they, were, they were given a number so that we didn't know who was who or anything that might have been associated with naming. There was also making sure that if they had any um, accessibility needs for the actual interview that um, we actually asked and addressed them. Oh, um, reducing the number of engagements because um, for our actual uh interview it, it there were several like a breakfast a lunch a meeting here a meeting with this like lots and lots and lots and we were trying to like really evaluate like what's actually necessary and um does a librarian in a cataloging role necessarily need to give a full presentation to like the whole library uh things like that um what else was there there was like lots of other little things um Oh, 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 and sorry, uh, kind of like early on in setting up the actual job, making sure that the requirements that we picked were actually required as opposed to just things we want um, so that we didn't eliminate people who were, could do the job but just don't have that specific requirement and making them kind of reducing them or making them broader, um, making sure that we're trying to just distribute it to different channels so that we get a wide variety of applicants. Um, Those were the big ones I want to say, but yeah, we had a whole guide of like just how to how to do it better. Is there anything that's um, either related specifically to Texas in the collections that you think is really cool or interesting, or um, just a, a collection that you have that you were like really excited about and wish more people knew about? For sure. Um, so part of uh, being at UNT Digital Libraries in the library system is that we get to work on the portal to Texas history, which is basically a big portal about Texas history that we get, um, we get the materials for that from over 400 partners throughout the state of Texas. Um, and it, it's got the gamut of things. We've got photographs, letters, ledgers, uh, maps, uh, really, really big photographs, uh, just a whole bunch of different fun collections. Um, one of them that I'm really enjoying right now that we're currently working on is um, a grant uh, that Rice University uh, secured from CLEAR about African-American and Jewish uh, communities in Houston. So I got to like, uh, during inventory, I get to, I get to see what's going on. Um, so they actually sent like, oh, the first batch was this bullet, like the bulletins from the synagogues or like their churches. So you get to see like really like, a snapshot into these communities over years. Um, and and uh, in one part of the collection, it was like sermons. And uh, one of the pastors had to give a sermon after the death of MLK. And I was like, oh, day, writing that must have been. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that, that's one I, I really enjoy, but we've got others. Uh, there's a Bonnie and Clyde one that's kind of interesting. Uh, there's uh, stuff on JFK, because <laughs> um, uh, uh, we work with the Dallas Municipal Archives. 
Um, the Texas Fashion Collection isn't actually in the Portland of Texas History. It's in the Digital Library, but we actually did a collection for them for our Rescuing Texas History grant program, which uh, allows us to provide about $1,000 worth of digitization to partners who apply and are accepted into it. Um, but the Texas Fashion Collection is really cool in that it's got all these different kind of clothing um, from or relating to Texas designers or people. And um, the physical collection is available at UNT, but like now you can see the digital stuff online. So. How do you define digital libraries and digital librarianship? Okay, I think that it's centered on both the technical side um, and the kind of culture humanity side, but that's really just my perspective. Someone might say, say so differently. Um, but I, I think it's like being of service, but uh, not necessarily at the service desk, but in a way that still impacts users and their ability to access materials like in the same way that a library building can, has, and will continue to hold books or materials for people to access. Um, digital libraries will provide, will facilitate the acquisition, the uh, distribution of information and tools for many users all over the world. I'm curious, what are some common challenges that digital librarians face? I think uh, one of the common challenges with digital libraries is that there is a lot of opportunity to do a lot of great work and create structure with a lot of tools in which to do it. Um, so it's really making those decisions and like setting up that structure and facilitating its changes or adaptions depending on the users <laughs> and yourself really. Um, so I feel like there's a lot of options and you just have to pick. How do you think digital libraries um, will or digital library work will change in the next five years? So I treated this question as a wish list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, from the digitization side, I'd say that um, moving towards camera based systems and making them more affordable and easier to use for a wider variety of organizational levels and um, budgets. <laughs> um, uh, on uh, digital preservation side, um, having mm, a greater establishment and sustainability of digital uh, preservation systems and um, being able to use and set them up for longer terms. Um, and then um, working with and making sure that foreign digital materials can be preserved long term, I think is another area for the digital librarians to approach. <laughs> what do you love about digital libraries? And maybe we talked about this a little with the collections, but there, maybe there's more than just collections. Um, what do you love about digital libraries and what keeps you motivated to work in this field? Um, so I really like that it's uh, kind of never ending, the fact that you can uh, approach the day and like know that there's something you can do or tweak or a project that's come in and it just keeps going, keeps going and keeps going. Um, we're not going to run out of things to digitize anytime soon. Um, on um, the motivation side, I... As an undergrad, I was really interested in both like the humanities literature side and like the technical side and like partnering those together uh, is, is still what I see myself doing in, 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 in my version of digital librarianship. I also like being of service um, and at helping people. Uh, our external relations uh, partner who goes out and gets projects will come in and like say how much people love the portal and like what we're doing and the work that we've done. And so it's nice to like know that your work is appreciated too. What do you think um, LIS and like, MSIS programs should be teaching students about digital libraries? I'm glad that uh, you guys are getting an overview of the different areas. I feel like that's like crucial, just so you just know what, what is available. Um, and because my version of digitization like is different from the user interfaces or software development or like working with the institutional repository and getting like scholarship for the digital library. I I also think getting hands-on digitization work is important just because I'm biased there and a, a full-on like understanding of photography. Um, meditation creation of records, schemas, vocabularies, um, things that you are getting uh, also, um, but uh, actually making sure that you do it and not just like kind of theorize about it, like actually hands-on doing it. And I would also say, um, allowing them to like kind of explore areas of, the, of interest that might just be personally to them 
um, that way it's like you've given them like these options and have give them a moment to like say I'm really interested in this and like go explore that. Do you have any specific, any advice for kind of from the other direction for um, students um, looking to um, pursue a career in digital librarianship? I would actually say um, I know like particularly right now COVID can, has made things harder in terms of probably getting experience. Um, I, I would say that is okay. Um, not okay, but like don't feel like it's it's holding you back because be, uh, because there are things that you can learn now that um, will still apply. For example, uh, learning a camera like on your own, like even like how just how to work it and uh, how to take your own pictures, like that's something you can do and it doesn't require that relationship. Um, learning metadata, doing your own photograph collection or your books or your albums or something like go ahead and like organize that structure because setting you're going to be setting up structure in the future um and then uh also not neglecting soft skills uh you, you feel like you go to you go to school to get like hard skills that you can put on your resume and stuff but like being able to communicate being able to uh, hold yourself or others accountable um leading things like uh i think those are still things that you can still learn in this current setting what is your current job description and what duties are included in your um, or what, what's a typical day on the job look like for you? Um, I'm going to make this my ideal. <laughs> I, I would just start off working on whatever research thing I'm supposed to be working on at the time. Like um, 30 minutes is what uh, one uh, group uh, for uh, production suggests. So like writing a paper or working on a presentation or doing like some processing for an actual research project. and then. Um, any kind of mental project, um, for example, uh, some committee work like writing a re report or something or a, a communication of some sort, like any sort of hard mental work. And then moving on to more administrative things like approving time, updating updating reports or inventory. Um, then there's meetings always sprinkled throughout. And then um, usually more inventory because I can kind of focus and get in the flow of things and then some email and then hopefully documenting what I've done that day and specifying what I'll do the next day if I don't have it already. What are your biggest goals in your current job? I picked three. Um, first off, we have this data that we've been collecting for years. And one of the things about collecting data for years is that you learn that you might need more or you don't need it in that format. And so going through and cleaning up this really big spreadsheet where I have added all the different ones um, well, is one goal. Um, and then I want to streamline our documentation for projects and like how it flows um, so that there are less sort of um, uh, spots for it, uh, making sure that it's not redundant, uh, or at least less so. And then um, I want to contribute overall to moving projects more efficiently and smoothly through the lab, um, making sure that we are ahead of uh, our timeline, preferably. So um, just kind of knowing about some of the material that's in the lab and kind of the, the things that either you or you mentioned um, kind of working with and managing students as well, like what kinds of things you'd be doing in there? Yeah. Okay. So um, our lab is kind of two, two rooms. We have our office for the librarian staff, and then we have a really, really big room for our students, our equipment, our like uh, shelving stacks for the materials and um, a break area for our uh, employees in case they need that. Um, within the lab themselves, once we get a project in and it's inventoried and prepared, we'll assign it to a student who will go take it to whatever uh, equipment it needs. And we've got several different kinds. We have Epson scanners. Uh, we also have Fujitsu scanners, which kind of pull the paper through and kind of do uh, automated feed. We have a copybook system, which is camera based kind of more for doc uh, documents. We also have a A1 quartz, which is oversized and kind of scans really big things kind of slowly, but beautifully. Um, and then we have a phase one camera system, which is camera based and can do um, uh, almost anything within a certain amount of dimensions. Oh, we also have a Sony camera system that we use for negatives and film or, or, uh, film materials. Um, so uh, the student uh, scans the project. Uh, right now, because of COVID, they're assigned to specific like workstations and we have others of them close to distance and they'll scan. They will um, pull the images into folders that we pre-make for them to use and then they will name them appropriately and then move them through our workflow. 
Uh, they also track their time, so like how much time they're spending on a project, they'll uh, let us know about that, and um, we keep moving until it's done. Part of our system is the workflow, um, so we'll have we have a, a big uh, hard uh, network drive that we call the P drive, and inside it we have scanned for this partner or scanned from this partner if they've done their own work. Within that folder, we'll, we'll have different workflow steps. So we'll have like a two scan, which is where I put the pre-made folders. So these are the things that will need to be made. Um, and then uh, the student will put the images into there and then move it to either to process or maybe to crop or scanning if they're still working on it. And then when they're done like making the images, they'll move it and named, and they'll move it to QC, uh, where it will, or sorry, physical check, where we actually make sure that they uh, scanned what they are supposed to have scanned completely, like not missing any pages or uh, backs or make sure it's rotated the right way, that sort of thing. And then once that's done or any fixes are done, um, it moves to final QC where a um, colleague uh, looks at it, looks at all the images without having the physical uh, materials in front of her. And uh, she'll go through, but she'll pull them if necessary. And uh, once she's happy, and or, or, or if she's not, she'll send it back for fixes too. And uh, 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 they'll return it to them and she'll check them. Um, she'll move it to either OCR, optical recognition, recognition to uh, have the text uh, be text searchable, and, and or move them to metadata where we add a template to it um, that pre-makes the fields that uh, would go across all of the records so that you don't have to add, this is from this person, every single time. Um, and then we upload it into the metadata system where our metadata students actually describe it in, in, our, um, in our digital library on the back end of it. And then when they're done, they will say publish and it will be visible online. 